Okay, so here's a large live oak tree in South Carolina at the Santee Coast Reserve. And to get the whole tree in the picture with a wide angle even, I have to be about 100 yards away. And because it grows laterally so much, this area is, is the old rice plantations that were run by the first the British Empire and then uh, colonial America. And uh, these trees, like, were all grown over with uh, Spanish moss. And uh, my friend was talking about how white oak trees retain their leaves all year, not as uh, live leaves, but as brown leaves until the spring, whereas red oak leaves shed their leaves. Well, these trees are evergreen. They, the leaves are performing uh, photosynthesis all year, and uh, the branches are extremely uh, non-straight, or they even go lower than horizontal. They actually curve down a lot in a lot of cases, and uh, so these are the vines that are. This is just one of the vines that's growing up the tree. <laughs> it's a bigger around than I can reach. And uh, this tree's probably, you know, let's see, one, two, about uh, eight feet in diameter. So there's a branch coming down. See, it started up on this curve. It curves all the way down, it starts going down. Now. So at the very end, you can almost touch, it starts off at about 25 feet high, and at the end, you can almost touch where it is. This is the next one over here. So, uh, the red oaks uh, shed their leaves uh, in the fall. The white oaks hold their leaves, and they're much more curvilinear. See how these branches are? <laughs> They curve down, and some of them curve down, and then curve down, curve back up again. <laughs> so it's really kind of interesting. This is where the uh, slave labor produced all the rice. You know, at, at least enough rice to pr feed all of London or most of England. Just in this one area on the Santee River, and uh, that's the base of the oak tree. So. These oak trees are sort of in a premium because, uh, you know, whenever they open up a new shopping mall or architectural site, they uh, clear out all the forest except for the old oak trees like this. This is just an old dirt road because it's a park area called the Coastal Reserve. So that's the old uh, live oak tree with the kind of crazy branches and the Spanish moss. And uh, somebody's, these leaves have fallen off, so even though it's February, this is what the basic uh, leaves and the Spanish moss look like and everything. So I'm going to go run around here for a few miles. But these are, uh, southern live oak trees. And, uh, the area around Charleston, South Carolina. They're just uh, very mosaic looking, all kinds of growth on them. Not just Spanish moss, but giant vines hanging down from them and everything. Now normally there'd be so many mosquitoes out here that I couldn't stand here like this. Uh, just tons and tons of, because of all the fresh water in the Santee River system and the coastal plain and the old uh, rice marshes. So now it's a very exceptional time because we've gone down to 20 degrees this winter on a couple of occasions and had uh, ice all over the ground and stuff, which normally doesn't happen here. So, 
you know, I was reading one article that said that, that the author had stated that, you know, the reason that, um, the reason that they used the slave labor, there were plenty of poor uh, Caucasian people in places like London, but that, uh, they had a greater immunity to the malaria, the Africans. So, the reason you're a slave is because you don't die. And of course, the American Indians really did poorly with the, uh, with the uh, diseases introduced by the Europeans. And I think that what happened was that malaria was introduced not only from Africa, so whereas Africans didn't have perfect immunity at all to malaria, of course, it's still a big killer, but they had some level of, of immunity that at least made them able to survive. They also had the technical knowledge because the rice was also grown in uh, Africa, so not only could you acquire slave labor to grow the rice, you would get the expertise as an added bargain, and a kind of devil's bargain, as it were, and that you would, uh, you would be able to you know, farm the rice as a profit-making business using the slave labor. Anyway, that's what all happened here. Right now it's just the Cant uh, Santee Coastal Reserve. It's like hundreds of thousands of acres. Some of it accessible by these dirt roads and some of it you'd have to boat and hike to get to. A lot of times you see a bunch of alligators and stuff out here, so it's kind of an interesting place. It's pretty un inaccessible in a sense. You can run <laughs> out here though, strangely enough, even when there are mosquitoes, because you, it, running is just fast enough and just uh, <laughs> raucous enough, I guess you might say, to, to uh, keep the mosquitoes off you. But if you ever stop, you'll be getting like what seems to me to be about um, 10 mosquito bites per minute, you know, at a minimum. I mean, it's really something else. Anyway, these are the gnarly old oak trees here in coastal South Carolina near Charleston. <laughs>